Over the weekend, there was a lot of talk about the NBA in-season tournament. Uh, this is something that has been talked about and rumored and worked on for years, really. And it's kind of, like, just come and gone. Um, now more than ever, it seems like it's probably inevitable that it is going to be taking place. Uh, possibly as soon as the 2023-24 season. Uh, because that would be the first season under a new collective bargaining agreement. Uh, which apparently is on track to uh, to come and go without any issues or work stoppages or anything, which is good. But the idea behind the in-season tournament is one that the NBA has kind of worked on for years as a way to boost interest in the regular season, kind of prevent tanking at the back part of a season, and boost viewership. Because at the end of the day, the NBA needs as many people as possible watching and you know, TV ratings, audiences, merch sales, all that. It's all its all a business. As much as we love just the sport of basketball and watching the league and these players, it all comes down to a business. And the in-season tournament was a great way to boost revenue and to make it seem like the regular season is more important than it is. Because unless you're a serious basketball fan, when it starts to hit, like, after the All-Star break, like, the end of February, March, April, like, waiting to get to the playoffs, it gets a little rough. People are hurt. Teams are sitting their best players. But, uh, bad teams just trying to tank to get better draft picks. I mean, not as much now that they've weighted the uh, percentages for the, for the top picks in the lottery, but regardless... Fans lose interest, basically, after the All-Star break up until the playoffs start again. It's like, okay, cool, wake me up when the playoffs start. I don't need to watch all of these unnecessary games. So the in-season tournament was a way to kind of combat that and give more meaning to these games and to make it easier for fans to invest in the regular season. Previously, they had voted, or had, not had voted, had proposed a 78-game uh, a season with the in-season tournament happening as well, and that got shot down. Um, basically, NBA owners want 82 games. <laughs> NBA uh, affiliate stations, like local broadcast networks, so think like um, Sportsnet LA for the Lakers, Bally's for the Clippers, uh, Yes Network for the Brooklyn Nets. Like, all those local markets have their own stations. And it's a lot easier to book 82 nights of games for these stations and to fill that type of content. Like, it's guaranteed ratings. It's guaranteed ad space. So keeping 82 games is probably something that's going to be non-negotiable. Uh, the only people that would really want to shorten it would be the players. Um, but owners, teams, networks, all of that. So 82 games is probably going to be what it is for the foreseeable future. It would be pretty shocking if they ever, you know, messed with the number of games quite like that that wasn't somehow adding more. So, the current uh, idea for an in-season tournament, which is gaining steam as of this past weekend, because Sham Sharania tweeted out some of the framework for it, he said, The games would run through November. Eight teams would advance to a single elimination final to be held in December, while all other 22 teams would continue like it was a regular season. And then all games are part of the normal 82 schedule with one extra game for the two teams that would play in the finals. Now that's pretty big. Being able to incorporate the framework of this tournament into the, the regular season is going to be a huge point in getting it approved and added in. Uh, you look at something like the play-in tournament, which was just recently voted to be coming back and permanent going forward after, you know, the first couple seasons were pretty successful. And now, this in-season tournament, they're kind of trying to find a way to work around the, okay, we can't take games away, so let's make these count. And an in-season tournament is always going to be something that's easier to market, because you're going to be able to make it feel big. Single elimination, they've wanted to do something that was more like March Madness for a while, but... Therein lies kind of the problem. So March Madness comes after the whole season. The, the brackets are set. The rankings are set. I, you can't do that with the NBA in the middle of the season in November, December, and like not have it impact how the playoffs go. So the thing that I keep thinking about with this is how do you do a prize? Like what could a prize be? 
because players aren't going to play for draft picks because draft picks are replacements for the players. So to say, hey, you get an extra draft pick, most players aren't going to care. Money, top players aren't going to care. And at the end of the day, the NBA needs their stars playing. They want their stars playing because that's where the money is. So you can't really be like, hey, we'll give you, we'll give the team a million dollar bonus. It's like, yeah, that's cool, but we're the Lakers. We have four players on this team right now making $30 million. Like, a million dollars is a drop in the bucket. Uh, and, you know, the All-Star game has been combating this for a while, and they've kind of hit on something here with the, the charity incentives and, and you know, the, the awards and all of that, I'm sure people would want to be the first in-season tournament MVP. And that's an incentive to some point. But it's hard to find something that everyone can agree upon. I think money doesn't really make a lot of sense. Draft picks might be enticing to teams and to owners. I will get to more on that in a second there because one owner has basically gone so far as to say that. But for players, like, the only thing I can think of as far as, like, proper incentive for one of these tournaments is the wins in this tournament should count towards the playoff seeding. So, like, hey, we won three tournament games, and that's weighted to count as five regular season games or six regular season games. Then... That would mean teams near the end of the the year can get that rest because they have the playoff seating secure because they have those extra games. Never going to happen. It's wishful thinking, and I know that. Uh, it's never going to happen because, one, TV networks don't like when stars don't play and they're not hurt. And, two, it's too hard to keep track of all of it. I mean, the NBA is a billion-dollar organization. I'm sure they could keep track of, of boosted wins and things like that, but... To me, the prizes is going to be what determines it because getting everything approved and then having an in-season tournament in November, December, uh, around the time the NBA really starts heating up, like Christmas time is like the NBA, the time NBA fans really come to life. Like doing a tournament and having it just end up being like back end of rosters and G League players and two-way contracts and stuff, like that's not what they want. They're going to want stars. So I think this discussion is going to be held up as long as it takes to agree on something that the players will go for. Uh, as, as I said earlier about owners wanting draft picks, Mark Cuban of the Dallas Mavericks never won to, uh, you know, avoid making a statement, always won with a thought on something. He came out and said they should be expanding the draft. And what should happen is the teams that win should get the first round picks in rounds three and four of an expanded NBA draft. Uh, currently, right now, it's two rounds, 60 picks total. He's saying double it. There's certainly a talent pool to do that. Um, but again, that helps the owners. That helps the league. But it doesn't do much for the players. So, like, it's going to have to be a two-part type of thing where it's like, okay, the teams have this incentive to win. And the players have this incentive to win and then kind of bring it all together. Uh, the fact that it is a part of the regular season and they've clearly already accounted for that, I think is a huge step. I think it could be done done well. I think it could be awesome. But this right now, like it's reading like it could be finalized as soon as 23-24, that's kind of wishful thinking unless they are already pretty well underway. So I would say, you know, the, the talk of an in-season tournament is something to um, get excited about and to start thinking about, but it's not like something where everything is set in stone completely. Uh, and I think that's everything. If you have any thoughts on the tournament or anything you'd like to see as kind of like incentive for teams to, uh, to participate, please let me know in the comments. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.